Welcome to the wonderful Roanoke Skate Park. This is probably my favorite skate park in the DFW area. And today, well, first of all, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but we are gonna talk about five things that offend skateboarders before we get into this heavy session. And by heavy, I mean extremely cold. Texas is all of a sudden freezing, so we're just gonna try to warm up and then skate. Actually, maybe I should warm up a little bit before we get into this, just like on this ledge, maybe? Yeah, just let me get my body going. <laughs> Getting hurt is a great way to warm up. I gotta end on a good note though. When you start sweating and you actually get colder because the wind is just making your face colder, but I have five things written down right now that skaters find offensive. These are probably things I've talked about before, but the whole point of redoing it is because I've made so many videos, there are so many new people watching, that here's a good, uh, here's a good lesson. These will get more offensive as they go along. So number five is the most offensive, but number one is what's your best trick? Now this isn't really offensive, but it is kind of awkward. If you've been skateboarding for a long time, you learn, let's say 10 different tricks, the ollie, the kickflip, and so on and so forth. But then you take those tricks to different obstacles. So you start compounding really fast. So it's not that you just learned 10 tricks. Now you can do 120 tricks because you're able to take those tricks to different obstacles in different ways with different combinations. So when you've been skateboarding for like five to 10 years, you've probably done like thousands of tricks in terms terms of doing the same tricks on different obstacles and you've just learned a lot of tricks. So to derive what the best trick is, is very subjective and hard to analyze. You can say what your favorite trick was, but even that sometimes it's hard to think of when you're just going down the back of like, I don't know, I've done, been skateboarding for 10 years. I don't know, I skate every day. I don't really find this one offensive, but it's always hard for me to derive to an answer. But also the funniest thing is they won't know what you're saying when you try to tell them what it is. So if you're like, oh, the best trick I've done is, let's just say a switch flip back tail big spin, they're gonna be like, I didn't understand half of what you just said. And you're like, well, and then you have to explain it. So they won't know what the trick is anyways. Number two is, are you pro? Now this one I actually do think is slightly offensive because 99% of people are not pro. So then you have to go through the conversation of no, but if they are an aspiring professional skateboarder, they'll be like, no, right now I'm flow or amateur and I'm trying to do this and this and this. It becomes this weird, awkward conversation and it kind of cuts deep with a lot of skaters because so many skaters aspire for this dream. But I will say, after going pro, it's kind of nice being like, yes, and then it's an easy conversation. But most of the times, it's a miss, and I've been asked that my whole life, and part of the asking was kind of insinuating, well, like, what are you still skating for? Are you pro? You know, like, why are you still putting so much time and effort into this? And it can, it can feel offensive. Number three, and the main reason I even wanted to make this video is, wear a helmet. Oh my gosh, this is the one that has for some reason just been the most rationalized for people to say to people, but I don't understand the context of why you're telling someone what to do. The reason that street skateboarders don't typically wear helmets is the same reason baseball players don't wear football uniforms, the same reason soccer players don't wear helmets, the same reason MMA fighters don't wear helmets, the same reason in any sport they have their necessary precautions. It's just the norm of the sport. Obviously, with any sport we could be safer if we wore more pads. That applies to everything. And even amongst skateboarding, usually when you skate big transition or a half pipe or a bowl, you wear a helmet because then the safety regulations go up a notch because you know, you're much more likely to be laying on the ground. I totally understand the sentiment where if you fall and you hit your head in a wrong way, you can be done. Like you can kind of ruin your life from that, but that the same thing goes for car accidents. There's a lot of car accidents you get in, or, or a couple, where if you wore a helmet, you would have been much better off. And this happens all the time. Same with just existing on a day-to-day -day basis. You'd be safer with a helmet on. And I think the biggest comparison is parkour. Parkour athletes, it's not even normal for parkour athletes to wear helmets, but they bonk their head so much more than skaters. Every time they do a dive roll, which is the very typical way they get out of a trick, you, a lot of times they'll tap their head a little bit. 
and each one of those little taps is not a good thing for your head. I'm sure a lot of skateboarders don't wear a helmet because they think it's just the cool thing to do, but I think it's just because it's the norm thing to do. They think that skateboarders just don't wear helmets, but obviously anyone who feels uncomfortable on a skateboard should wear a helmet. If you feel the danger aspect high, you should put on a helmet. The same way that if I played soccer, I'd probably wear like shin guards and elbow pads or something just because I know I'm going down and it's gonna hurt and I'm gonna be tasseling with someone and they're gonna be kicking my legs and I'll be crying the entire time. I think the biggest thing is to think about something like MMA. MMA, why aren't they wearing helmets? Because part of the sport is the danger aspect of it. The point is to knock out the other person, even though it is terrible for you. It is not good to be knocked out. It's not healthy for you to play football. The safest thing to do is to avoid every dangerous activity, but you take whatever precautions you feel is necessary and convenient for how dangerous you think the act is. This is definitely the longest one, but there's one more thing I wanna say about it. If you are online and you believe that telling someone what to do will work, you're either dumb or naive. I posted this on my story the other day, but the only time, the only time one person listens to another person or changes their mind based on what somebody else said is if they respect that person, which is why online no one ever convinces anyone of doing anything if they are total strangers. You'll listen to a total stranger doctor about medical advice because you trust their expertise because they're a doctor. But if they're a random person with nothing that indicates they're a doctor, they have an anime avatar and they're telling you how you should treat your wounded knee, you're gonna be like, well, of course I don't care what you have to say. The same way that skateboarders are gonna be like, well, I don't care if you're telling me to wear a helmet, there's nothing you've done to prove that I should wear a helmet. Obviously the same thing applies to politics, religion, everything. So never think that someone will listen to you. You're probably either, you know, as I said before, dumb, or you're signaling as well. You're like, hey, I'm the kind of person who thinks this, and I'm gonna tell someone else how to live so people think I'm standing up for something, but you're not doing anything. I think that one got a little too personal. Okay, four and five, these will be way quicker. Before we get into the last two, let's do a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Actually, I have something really exciting to tell you as well. So uh, there's nothing more exciting than starting a brand. And I will say uh, right now, I'm actually building a brand that I will be launching in my next video, which I know is super left field and I know I have progressed daily, but I have mentioned, I forgot to mention this before, that I'm taking a pause on progress daily. I don't know the future of the brand. I really like the brand and I don't wanna ruin the brand by just like pushing it in all these different directions. So for now, progress daily is kind of stagnant and I'll be building another brand that has a much more marketable appeal. One is very niche and, and very much me. This new thing is going to be a lot more universal and something that I think a lot of people will just immediately find themselves gravitating towards because it's like a product that people are buying and, and are asking for. So that's gonna be launched in the next video. But building websites with Squarespace is amazing because that's a, such a huge part of building a new brand. That first website build, oh! There's nothing like it. With Squarespace, you don't even need to have any design knowledge at all. You can just pick one of their award-winning templates and you can do everything, online stores, blogging. It's a great place to put all your socials into one place as well, to have a biography or some kind of portfolio, especially for your creative work, if you're someone who does that. Even skateboarders, I feel like it's a good thing to have a website that kind of displays and shows what you've done. If you've made multiple videos, if you've had multiple parts, you can kind of put it all in one category and link it all to your socials as well. It's a great place to kind of curate who you are and what you do. And to me, that's the best way to get brand deals in the future and to kind of pitch things from my website to them like, oh, this is, these are my offers, this is what I do, etc. You can also do blogging, email campaigns, you can do so much and they add new features all the time. So check it out. If you also wanna get a domain, you can just buy it straight from the website. You don't need to do a whole like, go to this other website and do like, skate parks are fun with my mom.com. You can just literally search it there, buy it there, easy and it's been great to use i go on there probably more than i go on other social media so check it out link in description down below if you want to sign up you can get 10 percent off your first purchase or domain uh, by clicking the link in the description or going to squarespace.com slash john hill or you can just go to squarespace and try it out for free and uh if you are someone who is building a business or building something new or if you plan on doing that it's a great place to start so check it out and uh on to the last two offensive things that people say to skaters. Number four, a little more offensive is, was that switch? Uh, the, <laughs> I've made a skit about this before, but the only reason that's offended, I think it's really funny actually when people do this, but when you ask, was that switch? It means, did you do the trick backwards? So if someone did the trick regular and then you ask, oh my gosh, was that switch? You're almost implying that it looked like they did the trick backwards. And if they're like, no, 
you're like, oh, it just looks Switch. And then you go, why would it look Switch? And genuinely, it means because it looks worse. So it's, it's always offensive if that makes any sense. We're kind of getting into the weeds here. Okay, number five, last but not least. This one to me actually happens all the time and it's psychotic when people say, don't break your neck or don't break your leg or something like that. That is insane to me that people think that is normal. I think the best way to explain how it feels is once I'm in a skate video, Heath Karchart was skating this handrail and a lady said, you're gonna break your neck. Don't know why she said that. I think she thought she was being lighthearted or whatever. So he said, you're gonna break your neck driving home. And she was like, what? Excuse me? And he was like, you literally just said the same thing to me. You said, you're gonna break your neck. So I said the same thing. Hey, driving home, you're gonna get in a car accident and you're gonna break your neck. Like, it's literally the same thing, but when you put it in that context, it's so offensive. Like, why would you tell a random person, hey, driving home, you're gonna crash and break your leg. Later, dude. Or don't break your leg on the way home. It's like, why would you even put that in their head? With most sports, especially like skateboarding, where a lot of it is mental, you have to get through those mental barriers to do the thing. So if someone puts in your head, hey, you might break your leg doing this, it's going to actually make it much worse and probably cause you to get injured much more likely because now you're thinking about it. <clears throat> I gotta calm down. <laughs> that one is by far the most offensive one. Never imply to a skater that they're going to be injured. That is insane that people do that. Like, oh, don't roll your ankle and hit your head on the ground when you try the tail slide and slip out and hit the back of your head. Don't do that. I would also advise any new skateboarder to wear a helmet, honestly. <laughs> you'll, you'll know for yourself when you should and shouldn't, but at the beginning, or you can just wear it forever. I actually, even now, if I try a trick that to me feels really uncomfortable, I will wear a helmet because that's the safety, safety precaution that I think is required. It's cold and I'm a little hurt, so uh, I'm gonna try to end this by tinkering a bit, uh, skateboarding, getting some pretty shots, but yeah, that, that last, like, hitting me in the knee was not fun. Um, but I do, I wanna, you know, I wanna get this, even though I'm freaking cold. Let's do it. When Braille skateboarding was here, I hurt my foot, rolled my ankle, hit my ankle a bunch, and it was just brutal. So I'm still trying to heal up a bit. And it's fun though, I'm like getting back into skating more. I took off like two weeks, which is psychotic because of my honeymoon and wedding. I didn't even bring my skateboard to France or Paris and people were freaking out about it, but I genuinely just wanted to hang out with my fiance, AKA wife now, which is very, very awesome. And we're back in Texas and now I'm kind of like, ready to get back into it even though i kind of have post honeymoon blues when you just enjoyed paris and you're like holy crap paris is amazing and i just want to hang out there all the time and we will eventually but right now we're back and we're buckling down and we're hustling and that's why i'm like building a brand that i'm launching is because we're really trying to collect our nuts right now yeah i said it thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time uh right now i'm actually really in the process of uploading as much as i can so hopefully uh you'll get a video very soon i'm trying to do two a week one a week one a week is the promise but two a week would be uh, would be me being good at my job. But yeah, check out the next video for the launch, and uh, thank you so much, take care. This is uh, Dale Decker's merch, by the way. This isn't part of my launch, I just think. Dale Decker, I love him, watch his videos, really good skateboarding. Thank you so much, take care, progress daily, and keep killing it.